Today I'm going to show you how to put text behind an image all in Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad. This here tutorial is a lot of fun. It's also a very impressive technique and it's quite easy too. I really like when text goes behind subjects, buildings, mountains, or in this case, a person. I think it looks really modern. I think it looks really well. And if you're wondering if you've seen something like this from my channel before, you didn't see it in my main channel, but you've seen it in my YouTube shorts. This is inspired by one of my YouTube shorts. I think you're going to enjoy it. So let's get into it. Here we are back inside Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad. And if you want to follow along with this tutorial, there's a link in the description below where this photo can be found. The first thing we want to do is to duplicate this photo. We want to duplicate it so then we can cut this guy out. To do that, we're going to click on the move tool so we know our layer is now selected. Two fingers to undo that. And then we're going to go up to these three dots and simply just click duplicate. And if we go to our layer studio, there is the background and there is the background duplicated. And just to tidy this up a little bit, we'll maybe click these three dots. We'll click in the background here and we'll just type in, we'll exit that and we'll just type in man or person or whatever the subject is. Click back and now we've got our background image, our man. We can turn this on and off. It makes no difference because it's the exact same photo. We can, we can move it and you can now see clearly that there's two duplicate photos in this project. We'll just take the layer studio away and we'll go into one of my favorite brushes, one of my favorite tools. It is the Smart Selection Brush. This is a magical brush. On the left hand side here, we can move it up and down this slider and that will show you the size of the brush. We want a fairly decent size and we don't really need to select all of this person unless you want the text to come all the way down here about the, the last third of this photo is quite nice i really just want the text to maybe come around here so i definitely want nearly all of his green jacket upwards maybe even his camera too although i don't think we'll go down that far but that's kind of the part of the subject i'm hoping to get the rest of his trousers and boots i'm really not too bothered about so maybe bring it down a slight bit more and the great thing about the smart selection brush is it does most of the work itself. You just click on it and away you go. And sometimes I guess I'm not being too precious. I'm just going for it. I'm getting the main detail in first and you can see I've done a, a bit of a sloppy job in some bits. In this case, I want to click this arrow and now bring the brush size down a little and maybe zoom in a little. And now when I click this, it's actually deselecting some of this. So. Again, I don't think we'll be as far down here, but I do want to get in this hand a little. Maybe go through this wee bit. And again, it's, it's cut in to this hand. So I'll go to add. And sometimes it's a bit of a dance between selecting and deselecting and changing the brush size. We might need to go a little bit lower for this bit in between. And again, zoom in, we might need the brush size even lower again. Will it get this, this bit? That's not bad. Two fingers to undo that wee mistake that I did. And maybe, I'll maybe get rid of that wee bit. I know technically it's part of the coat, or I'm pretty sure it's part of the coat, maybe. Maybe it's not. But I think it'll just look better without that. So down here, it's looking quite good. We can zoom in. Two fingers, always two fingers to move around the canvas. We get that slight bit. Oh, we're still on subtract, Andrew. Change it back to add just to get that. That's an easy change. And we'll move, zoom out. You can you can move and zoom at the same time. It's, it's brilliant. This morning, actually, this is a quick story. It's nothing to do with this. I woke up at six in the morning and I had some work to do. I made myself a coffee. I got out the iPad. I sat downstairs in my living room and I was doing work at about, oh, I must have been about 10 past six working on the iPad. And not to sound sad, although it probably will be sad, it was just a real joy to work in Affinity Photo to zoom in and out, just to drink my coffee early in the morning before the kids got up. I didn't have to be sitting at this desk or another desk on a computer or have a laptop on me. I was curled up with my iPad and uh, it's, it's great. The power in the iPad is absolutely unbelievable. I love it. So there, there we go. Quick story. I don't know where that came from. It just, uh, it's just a think. Oh yeah, that's what I was doing. I was zooming in and out while moving about, and there's just something 
so satisfying. This morning, I just, I just thought to myself, that story's going even further now. I just thought to myself, isn't it nice that I can sit in my living room and do this? And it just, it adds fun. The Apple Pencil, the iPad, it adds fun. And there we go, we're getting distracted by a story, but hopefully you feel the same. Let me know in the comments below. Do, do you ever get like that and just in the state of just, just the appreciation of what Affinity Photo 2 and the iPad and the Apple Pencil can do? And of course, that's the same in, as other design applications on the iPad. But uh, enough about that story. We'll go back to add and we'll get that bit in. And uh, sometimes you don't know where a tutorial is going to go, eh? So we'll move down back to subtract and I'm keeping it quite low and it's doing such a great job. I'll just as I say that that's missing some of these slight bits of the coat and then we're into his leg. I'll maybe just do that bit of the coat. I'll subtract that again. As I say, sometimes it's a bit of a dance between selecting things and not selecting things. I could go for this bit, but underneath this coat, but I think I'll subtract this here. Look, one tap, one tap, and that's doing the most of the job. And just while we're here, we'll get this bit to. Now, if I zoom out, I think that looks really well. I'll subtract this bit, even though I don't think our text will be anywhere near down here. A funny photo might struggle a little bit more with this also, just because down here, the coat and the background is very similar. But you know what? It's done a super, super job. I don't think I'll be down as far as this, as I said at the start. So the next thing to do is just go into the refine selection tool and that's this icon up here. So Affinity Photo has analyzed the photo. It's cleaned it up a little bit, but what I normally like to do is change it from overlay, black matte, white matte, and then transparent. And look, black and white, black and white, you can really see what's happening here. If it's white, it's going to be masked out. It's still going to be shown. The black bit is going to be hidden. And there's a few wee things here. We could get Affinity Photo to take a second look with and maybe in here. And also there's a few sliders that have appeared on the left hand side. The first one here, this is the smooth tool. And if we bring it up, we'll bring it up quite high just to show you what it does. It smooths out the whole mask. And this can be quite good in some cases, but not in this case. Two fingers done do because it just takes out far too much of the detail and it won't sell the technique we're looking in this. The next one here is border and if we change it, you can kind of see what's happening. We're, we're expanding the border out a wee bit and it's going to try to give out or try to give some more detail. We don't want that, but we'll also bring it down a little. If we do that, we'll see what happens. Not too much, two fingers to undo. There's a dot here, which means if we, if we click it, that's our ramp. If we bring that right up, you can kind of see what's happening. It's 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 making it a bit blurrier. We don't want that. We'll undo that. Two fingers, bring it back. This here is for our brush, the size, the width of our brush. We'll get back to that in a second. And then feather, if we bring it up a little, it'll also feather the edges. And that's not a bad thing to do. Not not that much. Two fingers undo. I'll maybe just, well, before feathered, what I normally do is bring the width up of our brush. And I'll get a Findy photo to take a second look just down here. And it has taken a second look and it's gra grabbed some of the, the background. You can actually see it. If we, if we go to the white mat here, two fingers to undo, you'll see it's actually grabbed too much of that. And we can clean that up in a different way. Normally having a second look does a great job if it is hair. It'll really bring out the hair particles and it's taking a second look. And again, two fingers to undo, you'll see it's grabbed some of the background. I'll maybe tap this, click in the feather and we'll maybe feather it by 0.5. And it's, it's done so little, you'll not see it. Maybe on our black and white, you would have seen it. Two fingers to undo and you can't really see it. Maybe if we zoom in, we'll try it again here. 0.5, okay. And you just ever, ever, ever so slightly. And I'm happy enough with that. It's it's not a perfect mask because down here there's a bit of artifacting, but that's okay. We'll put it back in this overlay. A few things we can do. We can make a selection with it. The, these dotted ants, uh, we can do. That's what selection means. We can, we can mask it or we can put it on a new layer. 
or new layer with mask. And really, if, if we went with new layer and mask, we didn't need to duplicate it. We didn't need to duplicate the photo in the first place because we'll maybe do that just to show you what happens. If we tick this and apply it and we'll go back to our layer studio, you'll see we have our background. We'll, you'll see we have our man, but this here image has been duplicated from this one. So we'll maybe just delete this. We didn't need to do that at the start. That was a, that's just a habit of mine that uh, sometimes when I'm doing things, I just go on autopilot mode. But really what we should have done is just selected this image, use the smart selection brush, and then use that new layer with mast, and that would have saved our step. Only took maybe a few seconds, but it still cut a bit of a corner. And this is our pixel layer. We can click the move tool and you'll see now our man is cut out and that looks really, really well. Two fingers done do. And again, just to clean it up, we'll go into these three dots. We'll click our pixel layer and we'll call it man again. And now this is the fun bit. Although that was fun too, but this is where the tutorial really comes together. We're going to add some text here and I'm thinking it looks like a, a wintry photo. He's got a, a, he's got a camera in his hand, maybe winter, winter photos or winter 2023, something like that. I might write. And if I click on this layer and then tap on the text tool, we'll bring it maybe something, something like that. When change the size, but that gives you very quickly what size it's going to be. And it's already selected Captain America font. And this here is actually a font I quite like. So we'll, we'll type in maybe winter 2023. And that's what it's looking like. And you can really, you can see, you can see straight away what's happening. And that looks really cool as is. I know we've got a bit of these artifacts here. We'll clean that up in a second. We'll maybe just double tap this and select all our text. And then we'll go into the text studio on the right hand side. I don't want to left adjust it. We will just center it there click on the pen tool or sorry the move tool and we'll move it in the place and wonder winter 2023 do i want to make it a wee bit oh i've selected the wrong layer there well maybe and that's a good point this here layer is now if i move it about really we we'll want this layer fixed in place or certainly fixed in place for the time being so i don't accidentally select it and to do that we can tap on these three dots and just hit the lock layer and now if we go back that layer is locked and we can grab the one behind it but we cannot move that layer and the one behind it i'll actually do the same thing tap these three dots and lock because the nice thing about affinity photo is we're on that layer but if i select something we can select with our apple pencil different layers just by tapping on it and we can we can tap on this text and move it i'm trying to tap on this man or tap in the background but it's not selecting anything even if we select everything that's the only layer that's now selected and that's quite nice techniques especially when something like the background where you know you don't want to select it you can just lock it and you know it's locked because there's a lock icon there also and just for a bit of fun we'll also uh, click into these three dots and we'll maybe, we'll maybe change the color. This guy has a green coat. So we'll tap green. And if we come back, you'll see now this layer has a green layer. We'll maybe make this layer. What, what, what color will it make this? Maybe a gray. I know it's text. I was looking for white, but there's no white. And there's, there's some bluey tones in here. So we'll maybe make this blue like that and uh, that, that's quite nice it's not necessary too useful as there's only three layers here but if you're doing bigger bigger projects tagging or coloring your layers can just help a little bit better with organization so we'll click the text tool again and i know i scaled it down but uh, i would like these two words closer and maybe scaled up a little snapping is turned on so you can see this snaps to the middle and think I quite like something like that. We'll go into the text studio again. The leading, I just want up a little bit closer. Yeah, I think that looks nice. And we'll bring it down. Maybe something like that. We'll hide that, deselect that. And I think that looks 
really, really, really nice. Winter 2023, I might be tempted to put a bit of a drop shadow in this, but normally for this technique, you just want a clean font. You want a clean font with uh, with no effects applied to it because I think if I do put a outer shadow in this and we'll just briefly move it like that. Something like that. It looks it looks okay. I don't I don't mind it. But I just think it looks much cleaner like that. It kind of blends into the photo a little bit more and you could change the color of this text. But do you know what? I'm really, really happy with how that has turned out. Uh, you could change it to something, winter photos, winter 2023. You could even put text down here, but normally you don't want to, you don't want to put too, you don't want to overuse this technique. You know, I could put text down here and, or the whole poster could be, you know, that man standing there. But I think it looks good that about two thirds of the photo, there's text, a third not, a third free if no text. I really, I'll zoom in a little, a little. I think that looks really, really well. We could do it again very, very quickly. It wouldn't take that long. It's a really popular technique, but it's also a really great looking technique. So there you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something. Try it out for yourself. There's a link in the description below so you can download this photo and try it out for yourself. As always, please like this video if you found any value in it. Please subscribe. There's going to be lots more videos coming out soon in this channel, all on Affinity Photo 2 and maybe a few other things. Stay tuned for that. And until the next time, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.